Most people think with commercial real estate, you got to put 25, 30% down, but with self storage, what you got to do is put 10% down. What? So it's actually what? an easier way to enter that market. <laughs> so it's so FBA. <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah nah. 10%? 10%? Seriously. Yeah, so that's, that's wild. Small business administration. Right. Right. Most people heard about it because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Know. Everybody was yeah. on it. Yeah. But that's been out since the 1950s, right? Yeah. Wow. They have yeah. what they call a 7A loan. Yeah, so that's yeah. it. Specifically designed for newbie self storage investors. They'll oh, wow. To 90%. All well, you need to what? do is come to the table 10%. Okay. And it's a 30 year time. Local real estate. That's a small business loan. Right. It is. And so self storage is a small business. Small business. Yes, it's real estate, Man. but you're running a business. Okay. Because you may have. That's a, a nice business. little loop. And yeah. You sell packing supplies. You right. sell tape, boxes, right? right? That, that's an actual business. Right, that's right, a right. service that you're providing, uh, but you just own the real estate as well. Right. That oh, man. Sense, it's, man. That makes sense, man. A lot of sense. So you, you man. for a small business loan, mm-hmm. purchase the real estate <laughs> and the business. And the business. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Cheat Code Unlocked. Unlocked. And today, we got a really special episode, we, something that we have been talking about for a little bit yeah. uh, between Jay and myself about Definitely. finding new investments, new ways to invest some good, good capital out of these markets. Great capital. Moving into something that we want to find that uh-huh. could be recession-proof, that could right. have a lot of strong value, strong, uh, strong application, uh-huh. and that is some storage facilities, right? Yeah. So we got a really dope guest today who specializes in self-storage facilities. Facilities, a very, very interesting niche market inside the real estate world. Mm-hmm. Mr. Ramel, man, Ramel, my guy. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. God bless. Fellow yes, sir. Seven figure club member. Shout out to him, 500. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Ramel, appreciate you being here, bro. Yeah, I'm Definitely, blessed. man. I'm, to be I'm ready to learn, man. Yeah. Chico unlocked. Yeah, I'm ready for the Chico's to be unlocked. Sure, you know man. what I'm saying? We about, to, we about to drop the game on him today. So I'm back. sorry. No, I, hear you. I hear you a lot on, uh, on Instagram and different places like that. Doing some right. really dope stuff like documentaries, real estate documentaries, and things like that. Dope Shopping stuff, man. On self storage facilities, man. So why don't we jump into like I guess you know where how you got started in self storage facilities? A little bit about your background in the space, right? Um, and yeah, let's kick off from there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, Ramel New World's young mogul, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Right? Okay. Started out the in hustle Brooklyn. city. You know how? We yeah, do yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love the Brooklyn way, but I, yeah. I've been in the real estate business for the last. Okay. Year. Mm-hmm. Right. But I started out in residential real estate. I didn't okay. start out in commercial. I, I gradually made it there just two years ago. Okay. Um, you know, my very first That's deal dope. was a brownstone in Brooklyn. So for mm-hmm. those of you, if you, if you from the city or if you've been in New York, you know those prices right. are sky high. Man, so I ended up getting this brownstone was a two-family under contract. Okay. Um, um, it was a motivated seller. They was mm-hmm. going through a pre-foreclosure. So okay. I went in there, positioned myself, got it under contract for $590,000, right? right? But I didn't have any of the money. That's the crazy part. Right, so Man. I teach people how to go out Tell them about there, it. Yeah. Buy commercial real estate with no money out of their own pockets. People say, yo, how that sound? don't make no sense. <laughs> yeah. I'm living proof. I've done it. Right. You got to pay attention to this one, exactly. man. No money <laughs> down. You hear me? I started with nothing. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Right? So yeah. First start. Yeah. yeah. No money down. Zero money, man. Got a hard money in the gap funder. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, how, what was your process of getting that zero money process? Yeah. So, I got the deal on the contract. Uh, initially, I was trying to buy it. So, I was trying to get approved mm. for the mortgage, but I okay. couldn't qualify. Right. I just started working straight out of college and right, right, right. for a five hundred ninety thousand dollars mortgage. Man, so I ended sense. up going to different real estate offices, right. dropping my business cards, networking. Right. And I found a mentor of mine, and I brought this deal. Oh, man. And I told us I need somebody that can invest in me. Right. Okay. She ended up connecting me to a capital partner, somebody who had a bunch of money. Yeah. Um, of course. And the deal made sense. Yeah. Right. So he put up the entire five hundred ninety thousand dollars for me. I just had fifty percent equity. God bless. So that's just how it goes. God right? bless. That's yeah. Blessing, yeah, right. It's yeah. about who you know. That's, that's the beautiful thing about real estate is mm-hmm. that you know, you can use OPM. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can use OPM Man. responsibly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But definitely be able to leverage other people's capital so that you don't need, you just need to come with the deal. Right. Come yeah. with the information. Yeah. Come with the skill set. The Put hustle. The plan together. Yeah. They got to feel like, yeah. yo, this is somebody I'm investing yeah. in him. Yeah. Not even the project a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. wants to focus on the money, 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 but it's really, if you find right. the deal, the money going to find you. Pretty much, we purchased the property for $590,000, mm-hmm. put about $40,000 in renovation, so not mm. too much, just 
a new group, okay. clean it out. Right. Because another it's investor like wanted yeah. to do their own thing. Right. Put it put it back on the market, so for one point two million, made six figures in real estate. My very first deal. Oh man! So literally, what? Before, oh, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Six figures in real estate. That was before, or after the fifty percent split. That was after. That was after. Yeah, my man. I paid with one hundred and fifty-seven thousand with you. Oh man! No, no money. So five ninety yeah. in forty thousand renovation. And you walk out selling the property for how much? One point two. One point two. Yeah. Oh man! Yeah. And that's your game. Yeah. Now you're like, what? I gotta do. You do ten of these. You're a millionaire. I'm out of here. You're out of there. Life is different. Man, that's I gotta give I it up. Started to you. from that point on. I continue to buy more properties. Right. Another duplex. Mm-hmm. Cash out refinance. Another one. I built up my portfolio. I had about it's forty so units. Buying holds. All buying okay. holds. So okay. I, I end up getting up to about forty units. Right. Okay. Forty doors. Right. But what most people don't tell you is every time you buy a property, yes, you cash flow, mm-hmm. and now you have more tenants. Exactly. You have more more, th- more people to manage. More yeah. People to manage. So yeah. Now, you got plumbing issues yeah. right now. Yep. You gotta spend 10 grand, put a new plumbing system. Yep. Right? Tenant is calling me because upstairs making too yeah, much noise. Yeah, yeah. Right? Property right. management, so man. Fly. I already know. Or not paying their rent. Not or paying not paying their, their rent. Trying to get them up out yep. there and do whatever you gotta do. Evictions and whatnot. Side. Yeah. What is, the, what is the laws in New York specific when it comes to like tenants and tenant Oh, options? yeah. Favorable towards landlords or not? Hell no. New York, oh, New York is a is a tenant friendly state. Oh, oh so okay. Me, like, I took my money and I invested out of New York because landlord, uh, New York is not a landlord friendly, friendly state. state. Okay, uh, that makes sense. New Jersey, Milwaukee, these are places I have properties. Okay, you, I see. After, right out skirt a lot of times. You got your money in 10 days, you out. No, okay. Oh, man. Landlord friendly. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's, that's what you need as a landlord. But it's yeah. still the, the headache. So it's not as passive as we say. Everybody yeah. Everybody thinks it's passive, but it's not as passive as we think. Right. So then uh, what happened in 2020 as the pandemic broke out. Man. I had a few tenants that stopped paying their rent. I'm still stuck with the mortgage. Right. I'm still stuck paying water, mm. right? Taxes. And they don't want to pay rent. And I'm thinking, well, what I'm going to do? So now I'm over leveraged because I'm still paying yeah, these bills. Yeah, facts. You're coming out of pocket. Yeah. Oh, man. So I started to strategy. I said, damn, what, what do I need to do at this point? Uh, maybe if I could get some of these tenants out, I could sell the properties because right. the market is high. Right. And then I could right. kind of be facts. balanced now. So I don't be so Top heavy. Debt, yeah. And I still have some cash. Mm-hmm. So one of my tenants, I offer him cash for keys. I said, listen, I'm going to give you $2,000. You leave, I'll put your items in the storage unit, and you know, we take over the property, get out of here, right? Mm, Just to drive. Yeah, it wasn't worth the headache. You got to make something shake. I try to save myself. Yeah, nah, that's, that's it. But it was a, a blessing in disguise yeah. because as I was looking for a storage unit, right. everything was booked out in my area. We call them every single facility across Man. the whole county. That's a sign right there. Yeah, if you're a hustler, you're like, wait a minute. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I'm doing something backwards. I'm getting this business. Yeah, yeah. And that's how I was exposed to it. From there, I started doing research, going on YouTube. And right. Doing. I found a self-storage mastermind. Give me a piece of that part. Facts, I yeah. I into a uh, self-storage mastermind, started learning. We got purchasing my first facility. It was an 88-unit facility. Right. I paid 750000 for it, but it just mm. changed the game because now I don't have to chase to right. money. Right, it's all centralized, right. You, you know, it's it's even more passive, right? Mm. I have toilets, yeah. clogs, kitchens, bathrooms, none of that. Mm-hmm. Man. Listen, that's it. That's <laughs> massive. I'm sticking to this. That yeah. makes a lot of sense because that's something we talk about a lot is basically identifying problems that mm-hmm. you have because if you have those problems a lot of a lot of people have them but then also seeing what works for other people already yeah. right right those source, those source facilities are a full up, then it must be there's no way yours won't be full if yeah. you had yeah. one yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying yeah, yeah. Right. so it's just a small a small shift in perspective right from places that's already caused you mm-hmm. problems it's a place where you can find some opportunities. Yeah. Or some right. That's, that's and another thing that you said that I really caught on to was the fact that you went straight to a mastermind. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't understand the ability to have a mentor or to go straight to the source as far as education and information. Like if he had said, oh, let me just go on YouTube and try to learn this myself. God knows the mistakes he would have made along the ways. You know what I'm saying? So real quick, speak on that. I want to learn some of the things, you know, you took from that mas- mastermind and what some people, uh, uh, our audience, everybody that's watching this can, you know, apply to their journey of, you know, becoming, you know, that's, somebody like you, essentially. That's a great question. Yeah. Being in that mastermind, it exposed me to a whole new world. I'm going to be real. Like, right. I was the only Man. person in that mastermind. You hear that? Everybody was like 40, 45 and up, and they didn't look like me. That's they crazy. Were talking different languages. Right? Man. Um, how, to, how to build your own private fund. Right. Most oh, of us, man. we looking for money, but they building their own funds. funds. 
a life insurance policy, right? Like IRS, all of these different vehicles, right? Buying self storage facilities. Oh, man. We, everybody buying apartments. No, we buying self storage facilities because we see what's happening. Right. As as the pandemic hits, as a recession hits, eviction is going to be all time high. House, yep. They got to downsize. downsize. As they transition. They don't want to get rid. Yeah, a lot of these yep. businesses that yep. shut down, they, they need some more. Oh man, put in these units. So I seen the opportunity, and at that point, I said, "This is this. I just need to share this with It's all about positioning, man. It's positioning. Like, you talk yeah. about positioning. Right? Literally, everybody's running towards one particular type of right. asset class. That Be greedy when others are fearful. Yeah, exactly. In times of recessions. <laughs> It does worse, right? Yeah. Single family, mm-hmm. things of that nature can do extraordinarily poorly in those type of environments. Mm-hmm. Whereas what you're saying makes a lot of sense. People right. have to downsize. That that items have to go somewhere. And then on top of that, the fact is we live in a consumerist society. People buy shit. Always buying shit. People buy shit. Literally. <laughs> it has to be somewhere to put it where somebody owns it and needs somewhere to place it. Yep. So now, in looking at self storage as a whole, what type of items do you typically find or see in that type of space, right? I know a lot of times people use it for boat storage, mm-hmm. car storage, uh, and other things like that. Is yeah. that a common thing? Is that a specific type of self-storage uh, uh, niche, or is it just... So it, it depends on location. Like, real estate mm. is based upon location. So when you, like in Florida, self-storage facilities is crazy down there in that area because they're not Oh, yeah. man. Just like, like Texas. Texas. Exactly. Oh, man. Texas and Florida is insane. Oh, man. Storage. Well, yeah. Basement, That's... Where are you going to store your items? Yeah. And yeah. Bottom, you have the water. Everybody have yachts. And oh, yeah, 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 so yeah. That's why you see self-storage in those areas. It, it's booming. booming. Right? Uh, but also, when you think about Airbnb, a lot, yeah. a lot of my tenants are... Oh, oh, yeah, we call them tenants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just don't live there. Right. Um, but Airbnb users, right? Mm-hmm. Your cleaning supplies. You got to keep somewhere. Unit, right. Have your cleaning company go to the unit, get the items, them, and clean it. And then bring back. back. Keep moving. So it, oh, it really man. varies based upon the location. Right. And where you are. Right. Um, contractors as well that have equipment and even doing renovation mm-hmm. properties, they buy them in bulk. And, and then the keep cheaper, someone in the storage. In the storage unit. Right. Okay. What I was thinking about was even like, you know, I've seen those um, storage like flips and TV. You know what I'm saying? People go bust into the stories like they yeah. auction it off and stuff. Yeah. And a lot of that is elderly people too. That's a market that I can expect being like, you know, massively using stories because they're hoarding stuff. They don't want to throw stuff away. I know we like, you know, our parents and stuff like that. Yeah, especially Florida, I can imagine. Yeah. They just keep that stuff in storage and then hopefully when, you know what I'm saying, when they pass, they can pass some of that stuff down to, you know what I'm saying, things that people can essentially inherit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Also, they're not making any any of these apartments even bigger, right? It's small. If you look yeah, at yeah, yeah. housing, yeah, yeah. it's going to be the smallest. Sure, smaller. you started in New York, especially in New York. So where, yeah. where, where are you putting your items? Where, right. how, how are you doing these things? Right. It's really a recession-proof business, and the reason why I, I, I love it is because if a tenant mm. doesn't pay you, we don't go by eviction laws. So you talked about the laws. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. It's not eviction laws. It's lean laws. Mm. So we oh, put a man. lien on your on your items in that unit. So, like, so if somebody okay. doesn't pay, now so we can cool. put it on auction. auction. For whatever the profits are, we can put a lien and take out whatever. Have you ever and do that I haven't had to do it yet. Oh, okay, okay. oh man, that's it. really I good too, to, though. I send them to collections. Once I send it to collections, they take they, care of yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's sweet. Yeah. That is sweet. I have partners in mind that definitely. Yeah. Do. yeah. So what about the financials in this type of space? Like, what is it the same type of mortgage that you would look at when right. you're looking to purchase? Like, uh, I mean, obviously. It's not the same type of mortgage as a residential property, but right. a commercial mortgage. What are the typical terms that you see in that space? Is it like a 30% down, 20% down to purchase a self storage? That's a great question. So most people think with commercial real estate, you got to put 25, 30% down, but with self storage, what you have to do is put 10% down. What? So it's actually what? an easier way to enter the market. So, so it's <laughs> BA. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, nah. 10%? 10%? 10%? Yeah, so SBA, that's wild. SBA, small business administration, right? right? Most people heard about it because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, you of know, course. Right? Everybody was yeah. on it. Yeah. But that's been out since the 1950s, right? Yeah. Wow. They have yeah. what they call a 7A loan. Yeah. So that yeah. is specifically designed for newbie self storage investors. They'll oh, wow. To 90%. Or you need to just come to the table with 10%. Okay. And it's a 30 year time. So that's what the, that's specifically the SBA 7A. 7A specifically okay. for self storage. So, so SBA loans are specifically for self storage. For, yeah, that type of loan. Okay. So if the yeah. SBA funds it, so you have local renters. That's a small business. 
Right. This is also self storage is a small business. Small business. Yes, it's real estate, but you're running a business. Okay. Because you may have that's a nice little loop. That yeah. You sell packing supplies, you right. sell tape, right. boxes, right? That, that's an actual business. Right, right, right. It's a right. service that you're providing, uh, but you just own the real estate as well. Right. That oh, man. That makes so sense, man. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. So you have to do for a small business loan, mm-hmm. purchase the real estate. And the business. And the business. Yeah. A 30 year mortgage is a typical seven, uh, it's a typical 10% down on a 30 year mortgage. Um, and they finance that, 90%. And then, and then on top of that, I'm assuming you own a financing applies here as well. You can find some deals that owners will be willing to finance at under 10%. Yeah, so you, like, you'll see that more often in self storage, typically because these are business owners, right? Right, they, right. They sell, they've been in there. Games, yeah. tax, right. They, they want to space it out over time. So right. you see more. They're not trying to get that money up front like that. Yeah. Give yeah. me a down payment and let's spread this out over five years, seller financing, nice. right? Once you get it up and running, Damn. then you can go refinance. So oh, it's really the same approach as any real estate vehicle, right. just that it's a different product. Right, 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 right. It's a different product. Man, she It might be, it might be. I know, I know, man. It might be. So I'm break this it seriously might be better, man. I don't know. Yeah. Because I love what y'all doing. We were just talking about it before, yeah. before the cameras got For on. sure. Like, somebody starting out, right? Yeah. And nobody, you don't need a, a certification, a license, you don't need nothing to get started with stocks Man. and crypto and right. being able to trade. Right. Right. But if you can make money doing that, you take that money, mm-hmm. use that towards your down payment for a self storage facility. Right. So let's just break down some numbers because right. I want to be very specific. Granular, yeah, let's do it. Let's get into let's it. Let's use, let's say, a $750,000 facility. Yeah. And that's what I bought, bought a $750,000 right. facility. How many doors? 88 units. 88 units. 88 units. That's right. solid. So let's yeah. just use that as, as, as a as if, Yeah. All you have to do is come to the table with 10%, so that's 75000 Closing costs, fees, and everything right. on top of that. You're talking like about ninety, ninety thousand yeah. dollars that you're that right. you're to come to the table. Mm-hmm. Multiple ways you can. Let's say even a hundred thousand. Let's say right? hundred thousand. Just for an right. even number. Yeah. All right. How, how? What is? I want you to tell me what is the process for somebody to be able to make a hundred k in the stock market. In the stock market. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, hundred k. So I would say if you started out with, let's say. Forty thousand, okay. yeah. even thirty thousand dollars, yeah. right? And you made ten percent return on your investment every week. Mm-hmm. I'm talking weekly. Yeah, you know, not every day. Uh, yeah, not every day. You know, you can essentially from that point you can make about you can probably get to a hundred thousand dollars within a year, year and a half, mm-hmm. just making ten percent. And that's a conservative amount mm-hmm. of trading options or trading yeah. anything like that. Ten percent a week, is like two percent a day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know. yeah. So you say about a year and a half, something like consistently. About a year, year and a half. Yeah. yeah, and then they can go and acquire their first self storage facility. Yeah. yeah. Running it once they have the skill set. Yeah. Okay. Once they have their skill set, <laughs> the education. <laughs> yeah. Like a solid, immersing yourself in the education for about a solid four to six months. I'd say four to six months. Like I'm talking eat, sleep, breathe. You know what I'm saying? The stock market or whatever it is, whatever financial markets you're trying to invest in, right? For four to six months. And then you start, honestly, that year, like journey that we're talking about with compounded interest could be shortened down way, way, way. Once you got the information. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's, we're talking about investment. Yeah. But it's, it's about consistency. Right. Yeah. This yeah. is what killed me though with this generation, right? Because we want right. things fast. Fast. It's a Tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. If you tell me if I do, even if it takes me two years, yeah, to make that type of money to go buy a facility yeah. that my family gonna be set forever, forever. Come on, and yeah. I'm talking this is, and this is a conservative, conservative. You know, conservative. Something that you know you can hit. Ten, right. Yeah. Ten. Some people, you know, you might hit it in a couple of weeks. Right. On, you know, general, but consistently. A year, year and a half, yeah. and then you're moving it into something that's passive, like you said, like what you're talking about with that storage units. So you go to college for four years now, you know what I'm saying? Four years. <laughs> We're talking two, two years, years of invested yeah. time and effort, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah. So that's one That's one way, right? Mm-hmm. And another way, because I teach no money down. Right. Because right. we start from the bottom. Most of us I love that. trust funds. Right? Yep. We I gotta love be that. creative. Got to be. Well, if you build out your credit report the right way, mm-hmm. you, know, you obviously got to set That's an important key, right? yeah. Get good credit. You need good credit. <laughs> Yeah. Open up an LLC. Mm-hmm. And then you structure your LLC correctly. So you need a website, yeah. business email, business right. address, address, phone number. It needs to be legit. Not right. Just open, it's, not, it's not just right? a backdoor LLC. Like you yeah. can go to multiple banks and get approved for 0% interest business credit cards up right. to 18 months. Right. right. So mm-hmm. I use Citizens Bank, right. uh, Fulton Bank, Chase Bank. These are like three nah, banks that give you 25000 30000 each time. Right. Mm-hmm. So let's say you get 75000 0% interest business credit cards. You can actually mm-hmm. pull the money off of those credit cards. Use 
got to invest is your down payment. So then right. you got you that's your down payment money. SBA is giving you the ninety percent. Mm-hmm. Yes, you in it debt heavy. But right. This is the strategy Still. that I'm giving on how to be able to get that return. Right. The reason why I love self storage facilities, yes, it's a business. Right. But now I can create multiple streams of income out of it. Right. They say mm. the average mean it has what seven streams of income. Right. Yep. Yep. So with a storage facility. With my ADA unit, we got a vending right. machine there. So now we put a vending machine in, cost you two grand, put a vending machine on that facility. Right. As people are moving in and out, they need it's a like, drink. It's like five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars every month, right? We're talking about a thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. right? So a thousand dollars times twelve months, that's twelve thousand mm-hmm. dollars. As you know, with commercial real estate, the value is based upon your net income. Right? Yeah. So that twelve thousand dollars can potentially add on $120,000 in value. Right, right. So you just right. added that on. All right, cool. Oh, Let's take it a step further. Now, hold on, real quick. Okay. Real quick, break that down because a lot of people don't. Don't use, yeah. Your NOI, your cap rates is what you're talking about, yeah. right? Right. And you increase your NOI mm-hmm. from a, a specific amount. Yeah. That specific amount will supply by your cap rate can increase the actual value of the building, not like mm-hmm. residential, yeah. where it's based on your next door neighbor's value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the neighborhood. Rate. So break that down a little bit okay. for me. Yeah, I was going to Bad, yeah, guys. nah, we're nah. We're gonna bring it back for y'all. Yeah, yeah. Very racist. So, That's key. I yeah, nah. Commercial real estate because it's based upon your net income. It's not right. by what Joe's property sold for, what his right. property sold for. Right. We don't care about what anybody's Anybody. property sold yeah. for. If right. I can drive dollars out of this this asset, that's how I'm gonna bring my bring my money in. So right. you have your annual gross income, mm-hmm. your annual um, expenses, like gross. Mm-hmm. So you get your income expenses, you minus that, you get your net income. Okay. With that net income, you divide it by the cap rate. Okay. Cap rate, it varies based upon your market, but the rule of thumb that we do, right. cap rate is typically 3%, three points more than what the interest rates are in the market. Okay. Okay. So if interest rates is at 5%, we're going to be at an 8%, 8% cap rate. Okay. So now that net income, we divide it by the 8% cap rate, that's how you get that value. Okay, I see. That's how we do it. Man, so value that's the beautiful. Property itself. The value itself. of the actual property. The okay. asset. Okay. Right. So net operating income divided by? Divided by cap rate. Cap rate. Cap rate. Okay. And now you get, get the value. value. And that's how you... Do quick numbers to see if you want to buy a facility and what it's worth. So if I'm looking see at see if it's actually worth it, right? See if it's worth okay. it. Okay. I'm gonna see the net income mm-hmm. divided by the market cap rate. Whatever that number is, that's probably where I want to be at if I want to purchase at that that the location. Price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, we gotta pause real quick because okay. I'm, I'm confused. I'm, I thought it was multiplied. Net operating income multiplied by cap rate. My no. tripping? Yeah, no, it's, it's divided by cap rate. Oh, it's a percentage. Oh, percentage. Okay. Yeah. okay. So there we go, right? Yeah. So percentage is, so we're talking like 0.05%. There you go. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 100,000 divided by five is not That's not right. That's in the right. comments. Yeah. 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 So I, I just did 10% for, uh, like, uh, okay. so I did 10% for, uh, like, just easy numbers. Uh, right, 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 right. So, Twelve thousand dollars net, like well, let's use a hundred thousand dollars net income. Right? right, just for like simple number. Right, right, right. That hundred net divided by ten percent. Right, ten percent. So yes. we're, talking, we're talking about calculating the operating income. We're talking about uh, hundred thousand divided by point. One is That's gonna give you your total value your net operating income. Yeah, now that's a million dollars. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now yep. that facility is worth a million dollars. Yeah. So now, or now if you in, if you're able to increase your income on a property by a hundred thousand, so ten percent cap rate property, mm-hmm. you just increase the value of that building to a, a million dollars in addition, in addition to, to, addition to, addition to whatever it's already worth. That's amazing. Right. This is yeah. Right. So literally that's that, sweet. That one vending machine literally could add one hundred twenty thousand dollars cash to your pocket. In addition, Damn. and that's money that you could cash out refi later. Sheesh. And that's a I'll have vending machines every corner of that building. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That building's about to be worth a billion dollars. How to, how to flip a candy bar for a hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Another pain point, right? Right. If people are moving in and out of these units. Right. What do they need? Oh yeah, they need movers uh, and all kinds of. So let me ask you, you know about the U haul hustle? What's the U haul hustle? Oh man! It's oh good. man! See, see, let's, see, get, let's get, get, let's drop some chicos. Yeah. So I used to back in the day when I was still trying to get my get my my my, my parents yeah. together to get some okay. income. Uh-huh. I was working for like part time in this little uh, like mom and pop U haul yeah. business, right? Uh. Come find out that U haul actually gives you the franchises for free. Really? Zero dollars out of pocket. We'll give you the franchise. We'll own you all franchise. For right? free. As long as you Amen. Have, that's yeah, crazy. Parking in the space. 
to manage to deal with the U-Haul, you can add that on to your to whatever your business. Yeah, it's an upsell or whatever. It's yeah. upsell. So now you know, the income from that, I think they just split the just income from, yeah. the, from, yeah, from with the franchise. Value. Yeah. Ooh, so, you know, it doesn't actually cost you anything. So okay. now thinking about what you're saying, that might be a great way to add. That's a great way. You already got the property. Yeah. You got the you definitely got the space for the U Haul. I have an independent transportation. Yeah. Company, right? So I didn't do the U Haul, but I didn't but, now I know that. Yeah, yeah. that's the, solid. Name yeah, U-Haul. exactly. Add that as a service. It's already credible. It's over. Yeah, bro. Yeah, hey, you just yeah. you just multiplied your yeah. ear net worth by ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right, so let's say you bring it in off the U haul. Let's just say another three thousand dollars a month. Right. Just throwing yeah. three thousand dollars a month. Easy. Times that by twelve. What's that? Thirty six thousand. Mm-hmm. Right. You divide mm-hmm. by ten percent cap rate. Right. Add an additional three hundred and sixty thousand in value. So man, sixty plus the one twenty. What's that? Three sixty four sixty four forty. Yeah. You know? So you just Half just by million. two plays, you add it on. They, they need anyway. They need it anyways. They're, anyways. They're, They're gonna be there anyways. anyways. Yeah, it might as well be on your property. This is why I love man. it because you can make money in certain ways. You can add a mover company. So right now, on top of the transportation, you got the movers. movers. Okay, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. move and move out service. Yeah, yeah. And those be that's that's money. So it's, yeah. it's just infinite ways of. All also, Toro. So most mm. people they have when when they run they car into businesses. Oh, they need places to park. Park it. Yeah. So now they can park know, over there. Park you, park you know what? Park LA is one place that I saw somebody um, had us pick up. Uh, I think it was a Tesla. They had Teslas lined up at the moving company, and when we were there, I was like, dang, they got like six, seven, eight Teslas out here. Man, yeah, that's a solid place. This though, so and and, and I, I kind of want to clarify this because. This is a really interesting concept because when you purchase a business, right? Mm-hmm. Typically, the business um, you know is valued obviously to assets, income, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, and the real estate is attached to to the business, mm-hmm. you know, as an asset. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, in the case of self storage units, is it the same where let's say the you could sell the business surrounding the the self storage unit, mm-hmm. hold on to the real estate itself? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. is it one and the same? In that case? No, it's the same. Interesting. Thing. You, can own, you can own the land um, and then lease, like lease out the lease. Yeah. Okay. And sell the business. So yeah. I, I okay. Own a self storage business and just pay. It's almost like licensing a part of your business to another company. Yeah, that makes sense. Still maintain ownership of the building. Mm. Just sell out the business of the self storage to somebody. That's dope. To manage it, maintain it, etc. Yeah, nah, that's. that's an asset, yeah, nah, that's that's yeah. hella creative. That's, you gotta help us get the Chico. Yeah, yeah, we need we need Chico storage I'm facilities. Driving, I'm, I'm driving around. Yeah. Like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. yeah, nah, this is solid because there's hella apartment buildings down here. So I already know people got junk to. Store. You know what I'm saying? Nah, that's dope. Now, along your journey, right? One thing I want to like, this part of the part of the segment, I want to like lessons, life lessons or losses into lessons, lessons into legacy. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like that. So I want to see what was your, some of your biggest losses that you learned in the space. Uh, and then, you know, the lessons will transfer to the audience to turn into legacy. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's a great question. Yeah. So you see, when I said earlier, when I learned about self storage, I jumped into a mastermind right away. Right. It's because right. I learned earlier on, you're going to pay more money by doing it by yourself. Mm-hmm. It costs you more. So it costs you more. hundred percent of the time. Mastermind. Well, it'll cost me more than twenty five thousand dollars to do it on my own and lose. So thousand when, I, uh, when I first made that one hundred and fifty seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars, I'm, I'm big headed now. Right. So right. I'm going to buy more property. Right. I went and put down a fifteen thousand dollar earnest money deposit on another building. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. That's too much. money. Yeah. It's over leverage. Yeah. But I didn't know. You that. Yeah. Because you're like, yo, I got this bread. It's quick. I could get another. Yeah. I was down on, on a for, for earnest. No money. problem. Yeah. yeah. Not even down payment. That's yeah. Earnest money. Yeah. It's gone. Money. Yeah. Contract. Facts. And if that contract don't execute, they can hold That money is gone. The yeah. contract expired because I only had like 14 days. Uh, oh, I didn't man. read it. I didn't get yeah. the attorney involved. Right. I wasn't able to get the loan in time. And next mm. thing you know, contract expired. They kept my 15000 mm. yeah. Man. If I would have had the right guidance. I would have never put that much money. Never there. put that I much money. never tell me if my mentees put $15,000 yeah. yeah. deposit. Yeah. Facts. I would always nah. have my 30 days right. as far as like my due diligence. Right. right. These are things that you learn right. through experience. And Man. Then, you know, you obviously want to get mentorship. Definitely. That's a hell of a lesson. I want to sit on that for a second because yeah. for me, you know, I, yeah. like I told you before the show, this, this, yeah. I started. Very similar story. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. 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 Except I went the opposite direction. Exactly. Okay. But, yeah. So you know, I always been trading and stuff like that. Took this, yeah. took some money, got a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of money at one point. Not a whole lot. Um, and I took a 
took my last little thousand dollars out of the money I made, mm-hmm. put that shit into a uh, flip, got my first flip, and similar to how you did, right? Mm-hmm. Throw money out of pocket, all money under the gap, under boom. Made mm-hmm. 25 my first flip. Right? Mm-hmm. Cool. You were out there, you're like, yeah, sheesh, yeah, I'm yeah. out there. And, uh, I came, I got a business partner, he came in, we started buying more properties. Mm-hmm. So two more, boom, cool, got big headed. Yeah. Started flipping five at a time. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> took on investors, started flipping five at a time, boom. Now I'm, I'm thinking we're doing it, I'm calculating the money before to come. Yeah, about see? To, about to do this at third. That's oh, when you know. Didn't have no mentor hmm. in the space. Literally just me, you know, thugging it out from biggerpockets.com, research, <laughs> po- you know. YouTube, I education. I YouTube yeah, yeah. everything. <laughs> I couldn't find a mentor at the time. Yeah, man. Because I, I, was, I was trying to do the, you know, hey, y'all take you out to lunch and pick your brain shit. I was yeah, yeah. Nigga, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't be one of them. <laughs> don't be one of them, man. Seriously. And I, I, ain't have, I didn't have the capital at the time mm-hmm. to, uh, to invest. You know what right. I'm oh, I, didn't, I didn't see the value at the time. Right, right. Long story short, ended up flipping five properties at a time. Mm-hmm. Over leverage is among hard money loans everywhere, mm-hmm. loans everywhere, investors everywhere, loss everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everything. Right? That's how it be. Up, this that the money going from here to there, you know, just all over the place. It was a mess. Can't keep track of and five baskets. Took me yeah. Two and a half years to recover from it. Yeah. Just because I had lost everything and still had people I had a whole bunch. I was trying to scramble and find money from, from anywhere I possibly could. Man. So that literally having a mentor mm-hmm. in that case would have saved you. Would have saved all of it. I probably would have had a real estate empire. Literally. To boot right now. Literally. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Think about that. I mean, pay attention to what he's saying. What well, everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> they took from me everything. It was nothing. All in all. Oh, all man. All in all. All right, all in all, let's just see. All right, so all in all, we had a hundred thousand dollars in uh, in investors. Right. I had, I had each property was about one hundred and twenty grand in sales, so about six hundred grand. Six hundred in hard money loans, right? That's seven hundred plus a hundred. I had two hundred fifty thousand in crypto at the time. Lost everything from that. That was a Man. separate thing. But lost all that. So all in all, I lost at least close at, to a million seven figures. Easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, seven figures. It still had to. It still had to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To, you know, so yeah. Get a fraction out. A fraction of that would have saved you seven figures. Get mentorship. Get mentorship, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Like, and I'll tell you this, even, like, even to that point, hmm. we got to bring it in because I met Ramel through a mentorship. Through mentorship. The Just imagine the connection. I ever paid for was <laughs> yeah. from yeah. Him, yeah. Money, yeah. Session proofs, yeah. and figure clubs. Shout out to the guys yeah. you know, over there. But that was the first time I ever paid for a mentorship program. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, obviously, that's, the, that's the power of the quality of people you meet, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? They say you're. The circle, your immediate circle is extremely important. This is the this is testament to that. You know what I'm saying? The quality of people. Somebody that just went from complete zero, no, zero money down. Zero. Now he's giving you guys the game on how to go from zero money down to building like a self-storage, you know what I'm saying? Empire. That's that's invaluable. I'm sitting here like, damn, some of this, like I never knew like, you know, that industry was like that. You know what I'm saying? Not 10%. Not 10%. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. I'm, I'm flawed. Think about that is if you could just get the owner to carry that ten percent fund, that, that really turns into nothing. Yeah, or, or even better yet, get him to carry fifteen percent. Right, just that little extra five seconds. Yeah, cover closing costs. Man, and all those lines. So, nah, that's massive. Oh, man. That's so, massive, man. You know, I gotta bring it to you. you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what we do, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, have you looked into taking that that uh, income that you make from self storage facilities and investing it into a market to kind of double? Double, yeah, double, Yo, that, that's a great point because yeah. I, I am right. So yeah. the gap, I'm looking like, damn, I, yeah. I need to diversify. Right? right. How do I put this in other places? Right. But the the battle that I've been having, right, and mm-hmm. I need you to really help give me the game. Most on definitely. I'm That's so what here for on what I'm doing, right? Yeah. I, right. I'm like tunnel vision, like real estate, real estate, real estate, self story. It's amazing. I know. Yeah. I, I noticed. The right. And, and, it, and I'm confident because I know it works because I got right because you've done it. But I'm yeah. not confident in going here and because money in the market. You don't know what's there. That's a very yeah, well, it's it's know. it's like me with Chipotle. You know what I'm saying? If I go to Chipotle, <laughs> I know what I'm gonna get. You know what I'm saying? Chipotle. You know what I'm saying? Anything outside of that, I'm like, ah oh, man, I don't know, man. You that know what I'm saying? But this guy be pulling me outside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, now nah, I, I get you know, what you're saying. That's that's, that's I'm, I'm glad that you right. at least have looked at it. Though. Right, right. I know, you know you have looked at it, but I gotta drill it because on the mm-hmm. same panel we talked about before, like taking money from the market. 
markets. Right. The whole point of what we're doing right now is to get people to, to start thinking outside of just the stock market, outside of just trading. Right. Taking that money and diversifying that income into assets like self storage. Definitely. To solidify their, you know, legacy. Legacy, yeah. right? Yeah. And same on the same end now, you recycle that money back into self storage stocks, self storage mm. REITs. It's a space that you already know. Right. Right. So, man, everybody out there, mm-hmm. start with things that you already know, man. You already proficient in it. No reason not to take that money, push it into, learn a little bit about the market. Obviously, you, know, mm-hmm. you, got, us you got, got us. We got it. We got you. Power yeah. Network. Power of the network in a circle, man. Yeah. Because you got REITs, like right. real estate investment trusts that would give you three, four percent right. return passive. A hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just in the same self storage space. You know what I mean? Just cycle that money right back over. That's, that's, that's a bar. Right that's right solid, man. That's a bar right there. Right. I, haven't, I haven't even thought about it. What's crazy is I look at the public storage, the cube mm-hmm. smart, mm-hmm. my extra space. I look at right. those as my competition. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm mm-hmm. by independent. Right, 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 right. A lot right. of people always think about self storage right. you think of those, but mm-hmm. like franchise. Yeah. 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 You think of um, you know, the big franchise, yeah. but you have independence. So I look at them as competition. I never looked at it as mm-hmm. I could take them. You could take and then oh, go around. That's, that's, that's a now, fact. That ain't really working that's for me. A ain't a fact. Fact. competition no more. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a fact. Competition, man. Right. Own your competition. Look at Coke and Pep- Pepsi. Yep. Right? Like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Or, or the different brands that come from Yeah. Them. Like, Pepsi owns all the different, different brands of that. Mm-hmm. Coke owns all these different brands of right. them. Right. You own your competition. That gives you some power in that. Yeah, man. Right? That's right. pretty. That's and you see you see a lot of uh, institutional investors, like, when they talk about aggressive takeovers and stuff like that, that's the whole, that's where it all begins. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these independent, or, I mean, they might not be independent. It could be a conglomerate. Mm-hmm. They decide, oh, man, this, this company is a good company. Yeah. Sometimes your competition, recognizing your competition is a good business is extremely important. You know what I'm saying? Putting everything aside, that's the business acumen side of everything. You know what I'm saying? Recognizing your competition is, okay, these guys are a great business. How can I invest in their business and eventually, you know what I'm saying, siphon off, yeah, siphon off some of their money that they're getting in their pot into my pot just so I could become a bigger conglomerate. That's really all the business game is. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, for sure. So what's your plans after this, man, when you, mm-hmm. you got your so stores of facilities. Hopefully, you'll be moving some of that money into the markets, right? Right, and expanding on that. How Definitely. big are you looking to grow your self storage empire? How big is it now, currently? Right. Are you trying to so right now, over three hundred units. Right. Now. That's impressive, man. Nah, I gotta give you some for that. That's solid, man. Yeah. So my, my goal right now is um, to get to a point where I want to invest in other people. Right. That's dope. I understand it's yeah. So much I can do. Yep. When I say invest in other people, get to the because the way I look at wealth, wealth. Is like yeah, I, I, being rich is I can take care of myself. Yep. Right? Yeah, like, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Help, that's freedom of time. Freedom, yeah. Right. Yeah. Wealth is yo. I can help other people become millionaires. Yeah. All right. Thousand you percent. have this great business idea. Here I, go a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Equity in it. Right. Here go. That's I'm, it. I'm talking about like shop. That's how you have. That's it. really that's, my vision on, mm, on the business side. You're saying. I'm, you're I'm, I'm where, I'm where I'm speaking at. our language. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Run it up. Run it up. Run it up. Now I can help other people. But also at the same time, now I'm getting paid. Right. For other people. The money is making money. Yeah. That's where to go. Always making money. That's smart, man. And most importantly, create more millionaires. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the most powerful thing we can do in this space. You know what I mean? Right. So, Absolutely. That's right. dope, man. I like that a lot. Um, you got me thinking a lot about. <laughs> Store, some story. I think this is yeah. gonna be something we're gonna be looking at soon. Oh yeah. Uh, what are some tips that you want to leave people with as far as like if somebody's watching this right now, they wanted to go, hey, tomorrow I want to you know get in there. Action items. Yeah. yeah. And start looking yeah. at getting some problems or whatnot. Absolutely. Um, Where do they even go to look? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for so watching. It's, it's, it's a few things where I would um, definitely advise them to do. Obviously, get the information. Right. Get Most definitely. Education. What, education. Go on YouTube. Cool. Go on YouTube. Do what you gotta do. But yeah. Um, Biz by Sell is a website, right? It's okay. a business brokerage yeah. website. Biz uh-huh. by Sell. Mm-hmm. You can go in there and start searching. Mm-hmm. It's not just self storage. Um, it's a business brokerage website where people that own restaurants, right. own transportation companies, you just any you business, hire yeah. it and mm-hmm. you just put it on that website and you can go buy other people's businesses. Right. Being that self storage is a business, mm-hmm. you can actually yeah. go buy those businesses. So right. I would tell you to start there if you want to find these facilities. Number two, mm-hmm. get pre qualified with the SBA. Mm-hmm. So when you want to go get that ninety percent financing, don't right. wait till you find the deal. Actually build a relationship with your lender so you can Google right. SBA 7A lenders in your area, right. find out what documents they need, mm. start to get pre-qualified, right. earn the business because 
Yes, I, I, I made it sound simple as far as 10% down. Yeah, because However, you're familiar. Yeah. SBA, they, they do require a, a certain amount of paperwork. Mm-hmm. One, of that, one of those things is a business plan, right? Right. So they want to see you have a laid out plan of right. the what you're going to do with right? the money. Your yeah. Five year projection, how do we right. plan on expense? Things that we talked about, right. that's what you add into that business plan. Right. But if you get familiar with it now, mm-hmm. when you find your facility that mm-hmm. makes sense, it's an easier acquisition. Right. I can make an offer and I can tell you I'm going to close in 30, 45 days. Man. Because I have, you got everything to Together. Really laid out. So, right. Um, that's really yeah. what I would, would tell so you. So, do you have like a, amazing. You with you, like a business plan template that you just customize according to each individual property? So yeah. Time? Yeah, I have a business plan template and I just kind of plug and play based upon, mm. all right, this facility is in this area. And we take yeah. competition, right? Is mm-hmm. the competition at full occupancy? If they're not, we want to know why. Is, yeah. is, is there a management issue? Yeah. Um, is the population growing? I know mm. in Pennsylvania, there was a 13% population increase over the last two years. Wow. Because yeah. a lot of people moving from New York City, right. Philadelphia, mm-hmm. like the city, New right. Jersey, because of um, the pandemic and the inflation, right. everything's happening. Right, right. I need to move to an area that's a little cheaper and right. I can survive. So we want to be in the areas where the population growth mm-hmm. is, is at an all-time high. Right. Um, and look where Man. people are moving. That's that's the that's the way to win in some stories. We call mm-hmm. it the, the trauma and the transition business. Right? right. So wherever there's trauma, we want to be. Wherever there's transition, we want to be. Right. We were just actually talking about Texas t- as a transitionary Texas. place right now. Everybody's going to Texas. Yeah, literally everybody. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> like, like man, and they don't have basements. It's over with. Yeah. It's double negative. Yeah. yeah, and you just run multiple ways. Like the the bigger vision that we have is um, mm-hmm. like. See how you have the podcast. Right, 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 so right. I'm going to give you, I'm going to get a play out there. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We, we building it out right now, but right. uh, we going to have some of the, the units as mm-hmm. content studios. So instead oh, of just putting mm-hmm. it out and, and making yeah. $100, $130 a month by mm-hmm. somebody having their trash there, right. right, we going to have the lights and the camera equipment. Oh, and wow. you pull up and be charged by the hour. Word. But now that's Boom. your podcast. Boom. Yeah, so each unit can actually serve as like a set. Easily. Each unit serves as a set. So now, now you, got 80, you got 88 of them. Eight of them be content. You know, studios, that's what are you easy. Do that, man? I'm, we, I'm working working on, we, we want in on that. Yeah. Sheesh. As we yeah. Speak, as we yeah, that's what's up. Creativity is like, yeah. how do I maximize the income because From, I notice yeah. it's bring more value yeah. and then our exit strategies, okay. Those big REITs, I know y'all, y'all could pay ten million because y'all, y'all have the money. Easy. So we gonna cash out because we put right. all the value up. Cash exactly. Out. Exit. Exit out. Seven Move into different million. investments. Yeah. yeah. Right. How you add in storage? How you add storage? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Man. So I've never, I, man, I haven't even heard of right. thinking about like that. Yeah. Nah. That's dope, man. I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Like going from zero down. I'm honestly shocked because. I was always thinking about storage units as like some massive capital that you just had to come up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't realize you just need 10%, of course, and also motivated sellers. Like, I think that's another thing that, you know, a lot of people that are starting out, like, that's what I'm going to be looking into. How can I find motivated sellers? Mm-hmm. Essentially, if I go to biz buy sell, the conversation I'm having is like, mm-hmm. I want to find the most desperate person that's trying to get rid of their property. Because mm-hmm. you sold the first property from 590000 40000 investment into, you know what I'm saying, just flipping it, fixing it, and then exiting for $1.2 million. That's somebody that sold the property for way lower than it was actually valued at. So motivated seller, motivated seller, motivated seller, man. Found that's the definitely. Found the deal, found the deal. Yeah. Um, I've, yeah. I've given a little more game. So right. most people probably think you should like, find the motivated seller. Right. Find the motivated seller right. as well. Um, there's a website. It's called Prop Street. You know, yeah. you are Prop Street right? yeah. So most people don't know about it for residential. They don't understand right. that you can use it for self-storage. Man. And still get all the owner's information and reach out to everybody. In your, every owner Man. in your county, you just call them and you try to find out if they're interested in selling and you right. build rapport. Man. Go through that process. Right, right, right. Yes, they're going to tell you no. Yeah, you get, get okay with failure. Be okay. Right. With, you know, that's that, important, man. Okay that, that, that part, that's the mentality part that people yeah. can't get over that hump. Because once you get over the, the other other side of like fear and you're like yo there's nothing i've already gotten past all the no's like mm-hmm. i got nothing else to lose at this point i'm just calling hey quick conversation i saw your property on the xxx website i'm interested this is who i am mm-hmm. and how can we be in touch and how can i help you and how can you help me you know once you just get, start getting comfortable having those conversations it's over with man the upside is unlimited literally it's about like, like life is about confidence even with y'all you right the confidence of what you do that's and that's, it shows, and that's how you succeed right right, we think right. about lebron james we oh man Kobe, yeah Michael, the only reason why they're confident. confident every time i step on the court i'm better than i know what i am I, yeah I'm better than you right 
Right. You can't guard me. Right. So we got to have that same mindset when I'm getting on the phone with him. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting my business. I know. I know where I, I, know I stand. I'm for right. I know what confidence I think. comes from execution. Preparation, too. Execution, yeah. Practice, yeah. yeah. So like, the main thing is getting started. Facts. Yeah, all, facts. People are all going to hang the phone up on you. People are all going to do those mm-hmm. things. You, you know, it is going to take some time for you to right. find your first deal, baby. You know what I'm saying? Right. You got to get take that first step to even get it in the first place. Right. Day. Can't let it break your spirit, man. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's actually really a ball. And on top of that, you can automate that process. I know on the on residential side, a lot of times people hire VAs to make those calls, mm-hmm. filter through, and just set the appointments. Mm-hmm. So they're only talking to people who are absolutely ready to, you know, negotiate some type of deal. So you save even some time on right. having to call every single one right. to do that right. and get the best deals that you can. So that's actually pretty strong. You yeah, got a game on it. Yeah, nah, you know, for sure. Game, I know, I know hey, so a little like, something. You know, props, so propstream.com, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, look, yeah. A couple different houses on my <laughs> Yeah, life. man. Yeah. Yeah. What I forgot to ask you earlier was about the income side of mm-hmm. self storage units, mm-hmm. right? Like, how much income do you typically see per door? Um, you know, on a mm-hmm. basis, cash flow after expenses. Um, per door, it varies because it's just like apartment buildings, right? Mm-hmm. You have one size, all buildings. kinds of yeah. So that changes. Right. If it's a three bedroom, you're gonna get more money. So right. From a storage facility standpoint, a five by ten is going be less than you know 10 by 20 right 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 right. but on average like, like 10 by 20s is standard you know mm-hmm. most people want to rent that type of unit because mm-hmm. the one bedroom you right, right, right. 130 140 dollars that's solid if you rent if, if you got a um like a boat or rv mm-hmm. 475 500 right it really varies it depends, but yeah. overall like Man. net income you're talking about usually a storage facility is about 30 to 40 percent mm-hmm. um Net. 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 Which is good. That's a solid business. I'll take that over. Yeah, Yeah. any day. Yeah. So let's say we got, let's say we got twenty units. Right. Uh, Average is average. You know, unit rental maybe what? Let's say a hundred dollars. Yeah. So average, you got bigger, smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred dollars. So we're talking. What did I say? Twenty units. Twenty. Yeah, twenty units. Two thousand. You're talking about two grand a month. Yeah. Thirty grand, thirty percent. And then, but a property like that might only cost you a couple hundred units. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Twenty. That's a very small. small Yeah. Right. So now you're making past. To be like fifteen hundred uh, a month on something like easy. That. Now, yeah, you scale that up to a hundred units or whatnot. Now we look at you know what four or five thousand dollars per. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, four or five thousand dollars per month. Yeah, mm-hmm. in passive income. In passive income. Yeah, for some, which is for zero dollars. Yeah. For zero dollars. And, and the biggest thing I love about it is like even if you start out with a twenty unit mm-hmm. storage facility, mm-hmm. if you follow what we just talked about as far as adding these different streams of income on it, mm-hmm. you now can add value to that. So right, you just pull that it's, money. Out yeah, cash out refund, refund. to go big. Yeah. Yeah. And now you got the strategy, so you can just start small and just and replicate, and grow, and grow, grow. Want to make the process? You just hire a management company. Mm-hmm. You don't need to do it yourself. Right. Be okay. Like, Property managers. Where, yeah. And you get to this point in business where you like you want to get all the money in the beginning. Yeah. And after a while, I was like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. I'm nah. okay with cutting my profits. <laughs> yeah. You do the work. That's yeah. Like, yeah. Facts. Okay. Like Diddy said, man, I pay every single one of you, <laughs> so I don't have to do nothing. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. I feel that. Yeah, I like that. So definitely pass me this one now. Last question is expenses. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, what Mm. typical expenses are you seeing on a a social facility? Um, So many, one employee or something like that? So you're talking about my 88 unit facility? Mm -hmm. I don't have nobody there because it it, it works itself. Right. Lawn care. Mm-hmm. Um, snow removal in the, in the, in the, in the uh, oh wow internet. yeah I never thought about that internet yeah. right mm-hmm. because you gotta keep the internet Wi-Fi. for the Wi-Fi yeah. and the cameras you, yeah. no employee you don't need it depends on how big your facility is right. because everything's automated right we have a keypad the gate you yeah, have your yeah, code yeah. you go right. to the keypad punch it in you go in and out you do everything mm-hmm. you need to do right mm-hmm. even when you, you need to get your vehicle right from a from right. car rental standpoint right. it's inside the unit The uh, once you put your code in you go inside and then the, the car key mm-hmm. is in the lockbox yeah box. You get the car key, get Boom. your car, and you out so of The car is parked inside. Yeah, storage unit. Yeah, storage yeah. Unit. yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. if I'm if I'm renting out, the automate Toro all the way from yeah. there. Yeah. So all of this stuff can be automated. And then this is how I, mean, I really 
stay back or hire a VA to manage the mm. camera. So now you just sit there and your job is to just watch this, manage this, uh, oh, manage, man. it, manage our system. Yeah, yeah that's solid. There, you, know, you don't really have to be there. Yeah. Um, the only time somebody have to be, uh, you have a proper manager that might show up mm-hmm. if you have a, uh, like, we got a 106 unit facility. Mm-hmm. That one, we have a property manager that come in maybe three, four hours of the day just mm-hmm. to check up on it. Right. Um, make sure everybody good. Yeah. yeah. For the most part, no. Yeah, you know, nah, that's no main power. expenses on a, on a facility. You want to be somewhere around 25 30 percent the most like, of your gross income, right? After yeah. that, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, know, it's not, it's not, it's not like taxes and shit. yeah, correct. That's what's up, man. man. Get a lot, man. Get something mm. into, man. Yeah. I appreciate you for dropping. I appreciate, the job, I appreciate you, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some crazy. Yeah. This, yeah. This is uh, this we on is it. So, like if the information and how we can make money starting out. Right. You know, who cares if you've been in jail? Right. Who facts? Who dropped who out of high school? You right. Gonna, right now, this is the, the, the most accessible we are to building wealth, right? Literally. This is the easiest time. Easiest to time to make, make money. Millions. Literally. You have the information. Strongly believe. That. If you don't yeah. need qualifications or you need the information in the world. Yeah. So you just want to have that desire. And then yeah. you could go and you could do stock options. Over and over. You yeah. can do all that cool stuff. Go buy from your see, phone. So, yeah. And, and just really build wealth for you and your yeah, family. Man. So I, I want everybody time, to jump man. in. It's, it's a beautiful time. time. Yeah. Live right now, especially yeah. as black Americans in America right now. Yep. Uh, it's just crazy. Yep. The amount of opportunities. It's endless. It's tremendously because of the information is now accessible. Yep. It's something we talk about. Finally. Generation yeah. of wealth being information. Mm-hmm. If this information been passed down to you from uh, an uncle or mm. uh, a dad or a mom or a grandmother or whoever it may be. For centuries. You started this joint when yeah. you were 18, 19. Yeah. Easily. So, but, you know, the fact of the matter is that now your children and their generation, they're going to get the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now your entire family now is set up so to be able to yeah. execute the same strategy yeah. this year, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, people right. are always going to need storage, real estate, etc. At all times. Shelter is going to be always needed. Wide open for you. Wide open. You know what I'm saying? Like, Everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it's a beautiful time. Imagine passing down 300 doors and what the next person is going to do. Three the, if they, and how, and to, how get to get that. Doors. How to give them three or more. The next person adds another 300. And then the and we're talking, we just now started. Put in stocks, REITs, get in the, for, the for dividends. Yeah. Next oh years. my God. Yeah, Stop your family. Yeah, man. Your head is going to hurt yeah. trying to calculate, yeah. man. Yeah, nah. You too, man, for sure, man. That's love. Yeah. All right, man, look. Appreciate you again, bro. You already Most well, definitely, man. You already Something man. special. If you're watching this, man, just know some special is on the way. That's a fact. Last thing we want to leave you guys with, man. Always make sure you are diversifying your investments Always. and diversifying your knowledge. Mm-hmm. We have hundreds of years of you know information that is literally in our generations, yep. our families, and things of that nature. There's so many different ways to, to get to the wealth back. A million ways. You need even if you're not going to execute it, at least learn it. So you have the option to take advantage of opportunities mm-hmm. that may come your way in life. Mm-hmm. The more you know, the more you're able to grow, the more you're able to earn. At the end of the day, it's all about what you put into your head, man. So make sure you're over there executing. Stick to uh, you know, stick to your core thing, man. Is diversify your information. Man. Diversify your information, yeah, man. I want to give away a free course too. So I have a please, oh, you know please, I mean? yeah. Um, if you wanted to text, you yeah, I got a text. Let's go. We'll put it in the link in bio. We'll put it, yeah. We'll, we'll throw it in the bio. link in bio. So, so yeah. Let's set up. I'm gonna give away a free course. Mm-hmm. Um, for anybody that's watching this, um, put you'll put the link in the bio. Yeah, yeah. thousand percent. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. we want to make sure we give you tangible steps. You lock yeah. in the yeah. cheat code a lot. It's not just give you game. We want nah. to give you to action. The actual yeah. steps behind the yeah. resources. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's what we do. Thousand percent. Yeah. We'll make it happen, yeah. man. A thousand percent. Where can they find you, man? Real quick before oh, before you leave. Find me on yeah. Instagram. That's Mogul Lifestyle underscore Only One underscore. Yeah. Um, you can find me on YouTube, Mogul Elite Club. Yeah. And um, you know, you go on my website. Website, mobileservices.net to find me and just continue to get that game. Let's, Let's get, get it, man. As, As always, man, make sure you tell a friend. To tell a friend, to tell a motherfucking friend. Well, see y'all next week. Yeah.